What's up, everybody? This is Steve with Steve Snakesuary. Uh, today, I want to I want to do an, another video today. And uh, but first of all, you know, I gotta say something. I was uh, I was actually corrected on some information about some about some snakes, and uh, and and so I want to do an, another video with some correct information. And first of all, I want to tell you guys, look, I don't know everything that's about snakes. I don't want to claim that I know about everything about snakes. Okay, I don't. I'm constantly learning, constantly growing. And one thing that I do want to say is. If you think you, if you get to a point where you think you know everything, then you've stopped growing, you've stopped learning, and there's no way that, that you can go anywhere else. And so it's it's not good to think that you know everything. And I completely do not know everything. I'm always learning, and that's what I want to encourage you guys. You know, to always learn, always always trying to try to try to learn new things. You know, always try to grow, and and perfect your skills, perfect your talents in the things. And I always learn from new people. You know, I always try to get more information from, from a lot of other people. And uh, and so again, I don't know everything about snakes. And since I was corrected on some information, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a video and I'm gonna talk about some things and correct that information. Okay. And what I want to talk about today is a coral snake. Okay. Let me go ahead and get this dude out here. Now I do have these uh, bite resistant gloves. These are from Snake Professional. And uh, I don't want to say that I, I support free handling snakes. I don't necessarily support free handling snakes, but I do always try to take precautions and things. Uh, so I just want to make sure that make sure everybody understands that. Now this is a coral snake, and uh, you notice the red. Now this is kind of a darker specimen, but you notice the red and the yellow are touching each other. Okay, and uh, red, and you can remember this because we have. Uh, uh, I'll give you a little saying to ha on how to remember that because we do have. Scarlet king snakes and milk snakes that have the same colors and some of the same patterns. Now the difference is red and yellow kill a fellow, red and black good for jack. Now you notice the red and the yellow are touching each other, and that means it's a coral snake. Red and yellow kill a fellow. Okay, and if the red and the black were touching each other, touching each other, it would either be a scarlet king snake or a milk snake. Okay. And, uh, and so you can just look at it. The red and the yellow are like warnings. Red and yellow kill a fellow. Red and black good for Jack. So just remember that. It's a good saying to remember. And uh, now one thing that I want to talk about is coral snake has neurotoxic venom. Okay, so it messes with your nervous system. And uh, they're, they're a lot more dangerous than, uh, than rattlesnakes, water moccasins, copperheads, things like that, which have a hemotoxic venom. Now, the one thing that I want to talk about that I was corrected on is for years I was told that these were rear fanged snakes. Coral snakes are not rear fanged. Coral snakes are elapids, so they're pretty much in the same family as cobras. And elapids actually have fixed fangs in the front, not in the rear. Now, um, I'm not, uh, I don't want to try to hurt the snake, so I'm not going to try to open his jaw and show you guys. You, look, he's trying to, he's going to start chewing on me. Did you see that? Did you get a close up on his head? He's about to start chewing on me. Um, there he goes. Did you see that? He started trying to chew on me. Now, uh, if I have to, I'm going to put him back up. The reason he's probably trying to do that is because these guys eat other snakes, and I had this—I had the smell of snake on these on these gloves, and so he probably senses those other snakes. So I'm trying to be real careful. These are these are bite resistant gloves, but I still, like I said, I always try to be very careful. Uh, I always try to be very careful. Let, let me try to talk about the uh, the fangs again on this dude since he was trying to bite me. I was I was trying to say I don't want to try to open his mouth and hurt him because I wanted to try to show you guys the fangs and here he are, here he is trying to bite on me. But uh, I didn't want him to bite on me either. You know what I mean? Even though these are bite resistant gloves. Um, anyway, these guys are not rear fanged. They have fixed fangs in the front. Now they are they are curved toward the back a little bit. They don't come out and go back in like a rattlesnake or water moccasin or something like that. You know, with a rattlesnake or a water moccasin, when they open their mouths up, they can actually make their fangs go forward a little bit almost, you know, so they don't have to, uh, uh, it's kind of hard to describe, you know, they can strike really fast and, uh, and deliver their venom really fast, but these guys, uh, their fangs are fixed and they are curved toward the back, but they're not rear fanged. These guys are lapids, so they're pretty much just like cobras, but their fangs don't go in and out. And like I said, they do have a neurotoxic venom. Uh, now the other thing is, these guys eat other snakes. 
Uh, they eat like little ground snakes, rough earth snakes, and things like that. And uh, it's very hard to get these guys to eat, you know, switch them over to rodents and things like that. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention, I don't want you to get too close to the head. A lot of people say that, uh, oh, well, you can tell if it's a venomous snake because it's got cat slit eyes. Well, the coral snake is highly venomous, highly, highly venomous, but they do not have cat slits in their eyes. They have round eyes. So you can't always go by the eyes. You can't say, well, if it's got round eyes, it's not venomous, because that's not necessarily true. Okay? But again, this is a coral snake. We do have these in North America. I live in Louisiana. We do have these in Louisiana. Is this dude going to try to bite me again? That's why I, I, I do not support... I don't support free handling snakes without any kind of protection. I don't do that. I don't. I don't do that. That's not a smart idea. Okay. These, like I said, these guys are highly, highly, highly venomous with a neurotoxic venom. It's a lot worse than the hemotoxic venom from the rattlesnakes, the copperheads, water moccasins, things like that. Now, the one thing that I'm going to put him back because I want to look up some information. I'm going to read some information to you guys. Uh, uh, I was questioned about um i was questioned we'll get him i'm gonna try to get him out another in another set in, in a few minutes i was questioned about the antivenom uh because let me let me read i'm gonna go ahead and i'm not gonna read this full article this is for the from the uh orient society and they were talking about the uh coral snake antivenom and i believe this article was done in 2014 either 13 or 4 2013 i believe this article was done um, and let's see, I'm, I'm trying to skim over this information because I'm not going to read the full article to you. You can go look it up yourself. Now, the, it said in the coral snake antivenom, in 2003, all of the 2003 antivenom lot expired in 2000, 2008. And then as the supplies dwindled, the FDA tested and, approved and, and extended the Wyeth coral snake antivenom until October 31st of 2009. Then the Wyeth Farm uh, Company was was purchased by Pfizer, I guess that's how you pronounce it, Pfizer in 2009. Pfizer sought FDA approval to extend it till 2012. And then that uh, that lot was actually, it was effective for, for treatment, for envenom envenomation treatment, but it was running low. So on December 7th of 2012, Pfizer sent out a letter to the North American health care providers and the hospitals, and they extended the 2008 lot till April of 2014. Okay? But uh, with less than 100 envenomations a year, it appears that Pfizer has sufficient supplies to address the coral snake envenomations until April of 2014. Okay, that was... Now, we're, we're in... This is September of 2014, so we're already past that date. Okay, and then um, now there is in 2010, there was a serpentarium in Florida was uh, selected to supply Pfizer with eastern coral snake venom from a variety of countries, uh, excuse me, a variety of counties in Florida. And then there were two other labs, uh, Med Toxin Venom, Laboratory Reptile Discovery Center, and Agrotoxins Labs, uh, which were collaborating on the product. So they were they were working on making new coral snake antivenom. Um, a while back, like I said, you know, like I just read, and you can uh, it goes into a lot more detail on the fact that they didn't have a lot of coral snakes to make the antivenom, and so they weren't able to make a whole bunch of antivenom. And because a while back they had extended the FDA had extended the uh, expiration dates for the antivenom. Because the envenomations were so rare, you know, there were, uh, there were so few antivenom, I mean, uh, so few bites from the coral snake, and it cost so much to make that antivenom, those supplies were dwindling down, and they, have, they, have, they kept having to extend the life of it, extend the date of it, and push that date back, the expiration date back. And uh, so, you know, we had a problem a while, for a while we've had a problem with coral snake antivenom not being able, not being available or expiring and they have to push the expiration date back things like that so there was a problem with the antivenom running low and them not making any new antivenom there was a problem with that a lot of people 
were telling me that I was incorrect on my information. So maybe I didn't get as specific with that information, but there were low supplies of antivenom and they weren't making any more for a while. And you know, this is late two, 2014, this is late 2014, and they're just now starting to, to work with several companies on trying to get new antivenom made. And again, that article was for, from the uh, Orient Society, so you, can, you guys can go look that up. And uh, so, but again, if you guys see a coral snake, remember, red and yellow kill a fellow, red and black good for Jack. If you see a coral snake, I, I do not, I do not, absolutely do not support free handling snakes without any kind of protection. And like I said, I have bite resistant gloves and things like that to, uh, to kind of protect me. And you guys can see that uh, he was still trying to bite me. And, uh, but be, be very, very, very careful again. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to get him out one more time and uh, talk about the coral snake just a little bit, just a brief overview of the coral snake. And uh, be very careful. We do have these guys in North America. They are not rear fanged. There he goes, he's trying to bite me again. They are not rear fanged. They, ha they are lapids. So they do have fangs in the front, but they are curved toward the back a little bit. And uh, a lot of people think that they do have to chew on you to get the venom worked in. And that's not necessarily true. Since their, vent, their fangs are up front, their fangs are right up front, and they are fixed fangs. They don't go in and out like the, like the uh, water moccasins and rattlesnakes and, and, and uh, copperheads, things like that. They can deliver venom in a, in, in a bite, in just a bite. They don't have to chew on you to work it in and things like that. So, again, I was mistaken on some of the information uh, as far as uh, their fangs and things like that. And uh, I'm always looking, you know, I'm not, I'm always looking to grow and to change and to learn new information. I don't know everything. And so if, if you guys see one of my videos and you see some incorrect information, let me know. And uh, and we can get that corrected. See this guy, see I've got snake, smell of snake all over these gloves. And like I said, coral snakes eat other snakes. And so uh, he's probably smelling those snakes trying to bite me. He's smelling them. He's, he's trying to get all over my gloves. And uh, but again, red and yellow killer fella, red and black good for Jack. And this is the coral snake. We do have these in North America. And uh, I live in Louisiana. We do have these here in Louisiana. They are very hard to come by. Um, but thankfully, I had a friend give me this one. He found this one in his yard. I got to thank Jerry. Shout out to Jerry, man. I appreciate you getting the snake for me. And uh, or calling me to come get it out of your yard. We'll say that for not killing it. Thank you for not killing it. Calling me. But uh, again, this is Stephen with Steve Snakesuary, and I, I appreciate you guys watching the video. You know, again, check out my website at snakesuary.com, where I show off photos of a lot of different snakes and have a lot of information there. And if you guys have any questions or comments, you guys can email me from the website. Again, just uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave me some comments. Let me know what you guys think. This is Stephen with Steve Snakesuary. We'll see you guys next time.